Hey everybody, welcome on in. My name is Tracy Campbell. Welcome to My Sweet Home Living where I love to give you lots of DIY ideas for getting crafty and making your own home decor all in the primitive rustic country style. So come on in and tell me hello. I'd love to see who is here and watching today. If you're watching live or on the replay, no matter when you're watching, I'd love to see you down below. So come on in, chime in. We are also co broadcasting or cross streaming over into the craft on the clock group so so excited to have you here today whether you're coming in from watching the replay on YouTube or if you're joining us from craft on the clock or maybe you're just a regular on my sweet home living's page or channel we're so excited that you're here I have a fun jar project for you today and I will say that I've been inspired by another creator uh, Christina from Christina's Rustic Decor if you don't know her I encourage you to check her out she makes a very similar style projects that we uh, that I love to make here on my channel as well so check her out send her some love and tell her I sent you her way she made some cute uh, jars this week and um, I'm, I'm itching to try it myself. Hey, Valerie from Mississippi and Victoria. How are you, Marie? So excited y'all are here today. Listen, I'm going to be live again tomorrow at 9, I think it's 9.45 a.m. Central. Um, don't know what we're making yet. I've got a couple of ideas that I'm really wanting to, to make. I'm just trying to get all the, the last few things that I need to make them. So, who knows? We'll see what we got planned for tomorrow, but y'all be sure to join me tomorrow morning as well. We'll be also cross-streaming over into the Craft from the Clock group then as well. And listen, if you don't know about the Craft from the Clock group, guys, we have live crafting DIY videos from early morning to late at night. You can catch all the episodes and replays by checking out the featured tab in the top of that group. So don't want you to miss out. Don't want you to miss out. Hey, Miss Patty and Susan, how are you guys? I'm so excited to be here. Uh, it's been a little rough. I'm just out of sorts. It's kind of like when you get out of routine or you get out of a rhythm, it's hard to get back in. And when you have several other factors kind of pushing you in the opposite direction, <laughs> it's even harder. So it was a challenge. I mean, I've been planning to go live today for like a week now. Knew what I needed to do, and uh, it just, it just, it's, it's hard. It's just hard. That's all there is to it. <laughs> hey, Miss Carol, how are you? So, as you're hopping on, if you missed the beginning, the, today's project is a jar idea, and uh, I'm going to make several of them because I have tons of jars running out my ears. I don't know about you guys, but I love to save jars. <laughs> so, I've got a whole collection here, and um, it's been inspired by another creator called Christina's Rustic Creations. Check out her page on Facebook. Uh, her name is Christina. She loves making rustic and primitive style projects just like I do. And she made the cutest jars uh, a few days ago. And she was also in our Vintage and Thrifted uh, DIY portion of their marathon a couple weeks ago. And um, just love some of the things that she does. She has a really cute style. And uh, so I want to give her credit. I'm not sure if she was inspired by someone else along the way. That's how we do things. It's all contagious. So I just want to give her credit because that is, that's where I've seen it done most recently. Hello, Miss Penny from Remake It Pretty. How are you, sweet friend? So we got all kinds of jars. <clears throat> And this is the first time I've ever created these style of jars. So you guys are going to kind of come along with me and, and see how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be a complete uh, flip flopper or whatever. Um, we'll see how it goes. All right. So <clears throat> she started. Oh, I've got some little. I see what I can do here. I've got a collection of little jars. We're going to make some jelly jars. Now I have made some jelly jars in the past. I should have grabbed it. Uh, but they were a little bit different. I actually applied some tea bags on the outside of them, did some stamping, and then put a label on and all that jazz. This is a different style. Totally new to me. Hey, Miss Cynthia. Thank you. So glad you're here. Um, hello, Miss Carrie from Arizona. And so um, I thought I got to give it a try. So I've got some dried beef, a dried beef jar, because I just think this is so cute and petite, just like a little jelly jar reminds me of. And then this is a pizza sauce jar, something that's kind of tall and slender. I kind of like those. But I've got some others that if I run out and I want to try a, different, a few different sizes, I've got a salsa jar and we've got a pickle jar. <laughs> so when you go shopping for your groceries, so shop for things with jars because, you know, you never know what you may use them for. Um, and I like to repurpose them for sure. 
So, you know what? I forgot to grab my, my cups. Um, so I'm gonna have to holler for backup. But let me tell you a few things that we're gonna need. Hey, Gracie! I don't know if she's gonna be able to hear me. Um, we're gonna need some clear silicone caulking. Yes, I need you to grab me those plastic cups in the bottom of that closet. Uh, clear plastic caulk, silicone caulking. Make sure it's clear. And just some clean jars. And then you're going to need uh, alcohol inks, okay? Alcohol inks are the key here to coloring. Thank you very much. Um, are going to be key to getting your color of your jelly. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to take the camera, you guys. <laughs> hey, Kim and Mary. Hey, Miss Pat. Well, this is totally not my idea, you guys. If, if you're hopping on, I've already gave credit to Miss Christina from Christina's Rustic Creations. She has inspired me with her project uh, a few days ago, and so I had to give it a try. You know, anytime I see a jar idea, I'm thinking, oh, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. So if you see some cute jar ideas, send them to me. Send them to me in a message. I would love to see what you got. If it's something I think I can pull off, I'll try to do it on a live or, or a short video or whatever, but um, I've just, you know, I'm just a sucker for jar <laughs> for jar projects. Uh, did you, Becky? They were awesome, aren't they? I'm gonna make mine just slightly different, not not a whole lot, but just slightly. Um, so I've, I'm gonna make. Let's see. Let's just start with the easiest. Let's go with like a strawberry. I think she did a strawberry and an orange. Um, you are gonna need some alcohol inks. I grabbed mine at Hobby Lobby. They have them for like $2.99 a piece, and you can get all kinds of colors. I've got purple, and some of these I already have because I've used them for lots of other kind of projects, but a few colors I didn't have. Um, I grabbed a, a purple. Let's see, is this purple? That's ultramarine. <laughs> it's almost like a blueberry color, purple violet. Um, but they're relatively inexpensive. You can even order them on Amazon. They're really easy to find and uh, easy to work with as well. So you want like a paper plate or plastic bowl, something disposable to put your silicone caulking in. Hey, Miss Patricia, how are you? Hey, Tina, and uh, let's see, Brenda, how are you? So I've cut the tip off my silicone, and you know, if you're not gonna use it all, you don't have, I mean, you might want to keep that tip on there or recover it. I plan on using this entire tube of silicone today, so I'm not going to worry too much about uh, recovering it. I don't, but if you're going to reuse it, you would want to cover it. I think some press and seal, um, like the press and seal, um, like plastic wrap, uh, works really well to wrap around the tip of that to keep it dry. So I'm just going to put... Um, Let's see if I can get this going. A good amount in this cup. And once you color it, um, to color it, you're gonna want to use the alcohol inks and some like disposable plastic ware, like a spoon um, or something of that nature. Okay, now let's put this right back over here. I'm gonna wrap it up in like a, a baby wipe. Okay, just so it kind of stays, um, keeps from getting dried out while we're sitting here working on it. I think I'm just gonna go with the strawberry first. I'm gonna use um, some red alcohol ink. I'm gonna dip it in. Let me show you what I got. That's that's my clear silicone. Have you been watching, Christina? Good, I'm so glad you all have found her. She was in our vintage and thrifted uh, DIY marathon a couple weeks ago, and I knew that you guys would love her style. Um, if you're familiar with what I like to do, then I know you'll love her style. She makes some cute things. Hi, Miss Nicole, how are you? Hey, Miss Donna. So I've got a bag of um, plastic ware. I don't know how many drops of red I put in there, but um, we're just gonna go with it. I like using these clear cups because you can kind of see what color you're gonna get. Uh, hey, Miss Sherry and Sue. And you don't need, um, you know, depending on the size of your jar will determine how much of this you really need. But you just wanna get your color evenly distributed for sure, because you're gonna coat the inside of the jar. The inside of the jar. Everything I have shown you, uh, for the most part, um, I usually apply all of my um, things to the outside of the jar. We've done um, tea bag coated jars, we've done painted and coffee grunge jars, we've done uh, grubby jars. Oh gosh, I can't. I'm looking over here at my little cabinet over here and trying to think about. Oh, we've done we've done the faux blackened beeswax. Let me show you this. If you nope, that's not the blackened beeswax. That's the grubby jar. Holy smokes, I forgot there was a candle lit right behind me. <laughs> 
This is the little blackened bees, faux beeswax jars. We've done those about a month or two ago. It smells so good. It smells so good. But um, I love anything with jars, you guys. And so when I saw her do these, I thought, I've got to show you guys and tell you guys to go to follow her, too. Hey, Miss Wanda, you're new to my page. Thank you so much. So glad to have you. All right, so that's what we have so far, okay? Looks like strawberry jam to me. Sure does. I think we're going to do up this little jar right here. This is just a dried beef jar. So I'm going to take it on the back of my spoon, <laughs> and I'm just going to start coating the inside of this jar with that silicone, okay? Now, the thicker you put it on, obviously, um, the less you'll be able to see through the jar, and it will look more realistic, okay? If you put it on super thin, it's not going to look very authentic, okay? Now, let's just keep coating the inside of this jar, okay? And you'll also see the thicker you put it on, the deeper your color will appear as well. And um, get you a real good look here in just a second. Ah! We're getting there, we're getting there. And I wish I, you know, there's really no good way to measure this out. So I really can't tell you exactly how much silicone I'm using in this little tiny jar. But the good thing is, is you're not completely filling the jar. You're just coating the inside of that jar. So um, your product will, will stretch a lot farther that way, okay? And you can find this clear silicone um, almost anywhere that sells like home improvements type. You know where I'm going, right? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Now this does say the package directions um, on this silicone. This is the G, I think this is the GE brand. Um, but it says, it does say it takes 24 hours um, to completely set, okay? So during that 24 hours, I would put it outside in a garage or, you know, somewhere where it's gonna be well ventilated, okay? Um, it does have some fumes, <laughs> um, and they can be strong. So if you don't keep it at bay, you know, out of, out of your normal area, it can be a little strong, okay? So have an air purifier or something of that nature or set it out on the porch. I would not set it out in the sun though, okay? I wouldn't set it out in the sun. Um, I need something to get down in the bottom of that jar. I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I wouldn't set it out in the sun because that may dry it too quick. It could crack, I don't know. Uh, may not set up real well if you do that. So. I've just put a dollop on my spoon. Make sure you guys can see this right here. A dollop on my spoon, and then I'm gonna scoop it down with the other spoon. <laughs> and that dollop just fell right down in the bottom of that jar. So now I can kind of coat the bottom. That's, that's the hardest part to coat is that bottom. And you can see the inside. I'm just gonna cover the inside just like that. And, um, and obviously, the thicker you put it on, the longer it will take to dry, okay? All right. This is like, you might want to wear gloves when doing this. I will say that. You might want to wear gloves because alcohol inks can stain anything they touch. So, you don't want to take a chance on ruining a countertop or tabletop, you know, really protect your surfaces and um, wear some gloves just to be safe, okay? Do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, we've got that covered pretty good. I think that looks like straight up strawberry jam. Could go, it could pass for cherry. Cherry might be a little bit darker than what this appears, but I think that's, now, if I hold it to the light, I can see streaking. Mine's not going to be displayed <laughs> where light is going to be um, a problem, I don't think. Um, 
But if you're worried about that, you may apply two coats. You know, let this first coat dry and then come back in and coat it again, okay? If you have any really, really thin areas, you can hold it up to the light and see um, where the light's coming through. You can see where it's darker versus lighter, okay? But I think I'm good with that, okay? Good with that. All right, now, let's see if we can make, let's make a grape. Let's make a grape. We'll make, um, now my other jars are a little bit larger. Um, although this one, I could use this one. I just don't have a lid for it. This one still has a little bit of a label on it, but I can peel that off later. No biggie. No biggie. Let's see who else is here. Um, the ink, Trish, it comes from Hobby Lobby, or you can even order it on Amazon. It's just alcohol ink, okay? Um, at Hobby Lobby, it's back where, um, like the oil paints are, the, the fine paint brushes and artist, uh, canvases are it's in that little section okay uh Gwen, no this is totally not my idea today this i'm giving total credit to miss christina from christina's rustic creations if you guys aren't following her you would love her if you love what i do uh you'll see a lot of the same similar style projects on her page as well and um you all check her out and tell her i sent you okay she is uh, super sweet and does some really cute projects as well so i would just let that sit out and dry okay we're going to finish it off though here in a minute though all right let's do let's do a great let's do a great um yes you're right you are right they do we've got lots of talented ladies in this uh community that really love primitive style projects. Now, I'm gonna put, let's see. I would think the darker the color you go, the more, the, the heavier of coating you'll want to have, okay? Um, I would just think the darker the color, the, you might see streaks easier. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll try with this grape, this purple, as with our grape. Um, I probably put maybe ten drops. I don't know. Maybe, maybe more than that. Um, and this is from Hobby Lobby. This is just called purple, purple violet. Okay. Now, once again, protect your surface. Um, wonder. Let's see. Wonder if you did a roll of. Oh, I keep missing. Wonder if you did a roll of red paper red paper inside the middle of the jar if it would help with the streaks. I don't know. That's a good thought. Uh, you mean, I see what you're saying, to kind of block the light flowing from it. That's a good idea. Just put like a, a, a thin sheet of, like a, a covering of paper on the inside. Like roll up a piece of paper, stick it down in there. It could. It would block the light from shining through it. Possibly. Give it a try. Um, like I said, this is the first time I've done this project, so we're learning together. Hey, Miss Barb. Hey, Miss Kathy from the Chippy Farmhouse. Hey, Miss Deanie. Miss Frances from Vine and Silk Designs. You guys, I'm so glad y'all are showing up today. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Tuesday. I had to think about what day it was. That's kind of crazy. Um, I think we have something planned every day this week. It's uh, baseball tournament week, <laughs> and my youngest is in base playing baseball, and then two of my nephews are playing baseball too, and um, so we're going to try to catch one of my nephew's games tonight, and then tomorrow night, you guys, my youngest and my nephew, they play against each other in the tournament tomorrow night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Or I'm like a nervous wreck. I don't know. Well, they 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 usually always play on the same teams, and it just didn't work out that way this year. <laughs> so we're like, this is hard. This is hard to cheer for. For um, you cheer for your favorite player, not for your favorite team. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's been hard. Whoo. Okay, this smells like straight up vinegar. All right, I think I'm not sure if I like this purple. I don't know. It's a little, it's a little, uh, fake. <laughs> it's a little too fake. <laughs> I'm going to add, this is called ultramarine. It's like a bluish purple. 
gonna add a few drops to that. It's a little bit deeper. I think I added five drops. And we'll see if that darkens it a little bit for us. I'm holding it away from my face a little bit. Do this in a well-ventilated area. I have my fans going and I have my air cleaner going and I have a few windows cracked around me to pull in some fresh air. So, all right, that, that deepened it. That's a little bit better. I th still think it needs to be a little bit darker though. Okay, I put about nine drops that time. Okay, we'll see if that'll help. I think that'll darken it up. It's just like food dye. It's just like artificial like food dye, honestly. Um, you just kind of play around with it until you get the color that you like and uh, go with it. But if you're making this up in a large batch, you could really make a ton of jars in no time flat. You know, just make a big batch of this and go to town. And that way all of your colors would be about the same. Okay, now this is looking a little bit, I don't know, let's, I think I just need to get it mixed up a little better. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now as it stretches thin, <laughs> it lightens, but I think we'll have it in that jar and we won't, I think we'll see more of the darker color than we will the lighter color. Let's hope, let's hope. Oh, Miss Deb, we will, we're making some jelly jars. And I, you know, I'm always looking for ideas to do with jars, right? <laughs> you all know I love saving my jars. And so one of our um, creative friends here on Facebook, Christina from Christina's Rustic Creations, she made the cutest little jelly jars. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to make those. And I've got to tell you guys. <laughs> I've got to show you guys how to make them too. If you're not familiar with her page, I'd love for you to go check her out and tell her I sent you. And um, she makes a lot of the same type style projects that I do here. So if you love the things that I make, you'll love you'll love what she makes too. Um, she's um, got the very same style and um, to her projects that I do. Okay, this can get really messy, you guys. <laughs> you could use popsicle sticks. That might help you scrape the inside of your jar a little bit better. I don't know. I thought about getting those out, but I thought, well, I'm going to set that right there. All right, let's get, let's get all of this out and just dump it in this jar and then spread it. I think that'll be quicker and easier than dipping and dumping over and over. Okay, let's see where that gets us. Let me wipe my fingers off and wipe my spoon off a little bit so I don't get this stuff all over the place. Oh, this is cute. Now this little jar, that's gonna be cute, but you definitely want a thicker coat. As I suspected, the darker colors, you want a thicker coat. So once this first coat dries on the inside, I might go back over it with another layer of this purple because I want it to be a little bit deeper of a purple. And those darker colors, that can be a little harder to achieve, okay, with one coat. Uh, baby wipes are your friend <laughs> with this project for sure. Okay, let's get, I think I got just a little bit more in here. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to embellish these up and make these look so cute. And by the way, these are going to look adorable in my little jelly cupboard. Oh gosh, these are going to be so cute. Um, or these are also going to be really cute staged with my faux biscuits. Do you all remember when we made those last year? I think it was last summer we made those. The faux biscuits. Oh, this would look so cute. Look so cute. Beside those faux biscuits. A little vintage scale, kitchen scale. 
and my little jelly cabinet cupboard. Okay. All right. That's what we got right there. Now, my light, if, you, if the light was shining behind this, you would really be able to see the color a little bit more. But I like that dark color. Um, I like that a lot, actually. Hold on. I see a spot in the bottom I didn't quite get covered. Okay. It wants to get really thick at the bottom, around the bottom edge of your jar. So take that spoon and pull it upward and that'll help pull that thickness up to get a little bit more of an even coverage on the inside. Ah, those are so cute. <laughs> so cute. So let me, I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, let's set this over here out of the way. All right. Set that over there. Now, the only thing is, these aren't completely dry, so I would let these, I would let these dry. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put this little lid on here, and that's what it would look like as is. Now, of course, you're going to want to embellish it, right? So let's get, let's get some items out. What do we want to use? Um. I always like using coffee grunged fabric or cheesecloth, something like that. I don't have any big strips of muslin material, coffee grunged. I haven't coffee grunged any material, baked any material with the coffee grunge in a long time. So I'm kind of running low on my stash <laughs> or my stash is completely gone. That's more like it. So I have a little strip. I'm just going to cut out some squares. Um, I'm not going to cut them. I'm going to rip it. Okay. Now that's going to be way too big for this little jar, but we'll trim it down. Um, I like to rip this material because it gives you that real cute little tattered edge that just makes it look a little more homespun. Okay, let me make sure I didn't, that, that's going to be really cute. Okay, well, let's rip one more. So I'll need another one for my grape after it dries. I'm not going to be able to do the topper on that one right away because I don't have my little lid for that little jar. Sometimes I throw the lids away, you guys. So that's probably what I've done. So I'll probably really have to wait for that to dry or cover it with some um, <laughs> some plastic wrap or something. I'll have to come up with a plan B here. All right, so since this uh, little strip right here has not been coffee grunged, we're gonna coffee grunge it. What did I just do with that little bag of, it's gotta be right here under my face. Ah, there it is. It fell out of my box. <laughs> hey, Miss Jerry. And hi, Miss Christina. We've been talking about you and your cute little jelly jars. You've inspired me this week. So I've been telling everybody and showing everybody your cute jar idea. <laughs> so I'm glad you popped on here. So glad you popped on. All right. So I just have some scraps right here. Now, some of these might be a little too... A little too thick. I don't know. Let's see here. I kind of liked this little bitty jar. I feel like needs a thinner, a thinner strip. You know what I mean? So let's take this and let's just see if we can't tear it in half. Um, I love using this muslin material. It's so forgiving. It's so easy to use. I mean, like, for real. I use it on all kinds of things. I've got a fun project that I'm really wanting to do. I'd love to do it tomorrow. I just don't know if I have everything I need. I've been looking and looking and looking <laughs> for the last few things, and I haven't been able to find them. So I've got to buckle down and see if I can't nail it down because you guys are going to love it. All right, so all I'm going to do is just tie this around the top. Yeah, I think I should have cut that little square a little bit bigger. Well, hot dog. Good thing I got more. Let's make it a little bit wider. There we 
we go. I'll use that little strip here in a minute. Okay. That's better. Okay. Now I'm going to take this little strip that we tore. And that's what I'm going to use to tie it down. And then if it's still a little bit big, it is going to be a little bit big. Why do I keep doing that to myself? I don't want to make it too small. Okay. Now the good thing about this is this muslin material is thick enough that it will cover that little jar lid. I thought that little cheesecloth would look really cute on there too, but we'll just stick it with this. And then you can make yours any way you want. I just wanted to share this super cute little idea with you that inspired me for Miss Christina. And I think these little, these little mini uh, dried beef jars are so cute. But you could do a variety of sizes. If you have something that you use a lot and you have several jars that are the same, you know, the same style and shape, size and all that, you could make a whole little collection. How cute would that be? That would be so cute. All right. That was probably the hardest part is getting that little, <laughs> that little flap on there. Okay. Hard part is over. Let's just tie that in a little knot. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little label. You could add a little hang tag. You know, you get the idea. I think, I don't know. Let's try to we'll see what a little bow looks like. I'm not much on bows, but we're going with a little bit different style today. So maybe that calls for something a little bit out of the ordinary. All right, I kind of like it. Sure, the thinner this material is, you can't hardly rip it. So I'm just going to cut it. Okay, so now since I have not coffee grunged <laughs> this little uh, strip of material, oh, my nose is tickly, tickly, tickly. I do have a fresh batch of coffee grunge sitting here waiting. And in fact, it is so fresh that it's so hot, <laughs> I can't hardly touch it. <laughs> So all I'm going to do is give it a shake and get that cinnamon in there really good, distributed really good before I start brushing it on. Oh gosh, it's tight. There we go. And all I'm going to do, let's see, let's use, hmm, I'm thinking here. I think I'm going to save that brush for my a different label I'm going to put on here in a minute. So if you don't want to coffee grunge a whole batch of fabric, you can do it individually, which is what I'm doing right here because I am low on coffee stained fabric right now. I need to do, I need to do some fresh batches of baked fabric with coffee grunge, but, and you could totally do that before you put your material on, okay? Ideally, that's probably what you would rather do anyway. So I needed to get some of that cinnamon on my brush. So I went deeper down into my jar to get some of that cinnamon on there. And I'm putting it on around the, um, kind of the bottom of the lid. Now, if you are new to using coffee grunge, let me tell you that it can go on darker and it will dry lighter, okay? If it dries and it's still too dark for you, all you got to do is add some water, blot it off, and it will lighten it, okay? You can continue to do that to get, get it to the color or shade that you want. There's really no permanent, <laughs> um, you know, nothing is permanent with using it other than you get a little bit of a vintage color, but you can alter the shade or the darkness, the lightness or whatever um, of, of whatever you're putting it on just simply by adding more water or adding another coat of the, the mixture to make it darker if you want it darker okay so if it dries and it's still not dark enough for me i just add another coat of it it's just like paint <laughs> right um and so 
it's super user friendly to use. You can mix it up with a lot of the ingredients that you have in your kitchen. All it is, you guys, is hot water, co instant coffee, cinnamon, and vanilla. So, and you can even, you could even leave the, the vanilla or the cinnamon out or whatever, okay? The cinnamon will give you a little bit of the flaking and, and obviously the smell. It's not super strong. Um, it's just a nice, subtle smell. I think that just is perfect for primitive style decorating, okay? Now, I got mine super wet because I really want it to look, I really want the look, right? Now, I didn't bring my, my dryer to the table with me today, so this will have to dry. I could sit it out in the sun and let it let it heat it and dry it, okay? And it will get a little bit of that crispy look to it, okay? Now, if you wanted to add something else to it, you totally can. Uh, let me wipe my hands off because I wanted to add a little hand, um, a little handwritten tag to this, okay? You could find printable labels online and print them off um, and put on there, which is what Miss Christina had. She had some really cute little, um, uh, printed. You know, I've showed you guys how to print on uh, fabric. Okay, you could do that. You could print those labels on some fabric, glue it on there, Mod Podge it on there, whatever you wanted to do. I'm going for a little bit more of a uh, maybe a homespun. I don't know which of what you want to call it, honestly. I'm just going to do a handwritten uh, label, and I'll probably coffee stain it too. I just tore a little strip of that fabric material. It does, it does, it does, Christina. Um, and I'm just gonna write strawberry jam on there and I'm gonna probably Mod Podge it onto the front of my jar, okay? Now, think about it. Back in primitive times, handwritten labels were probably all they had access to, honestly. So, pick your style. I'm trying to look for something that I can write on. This table is kind of a little bit of a cushion under it. Um, I need something, something, come on, let's see, this will work. I need something that's a little stronger underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to hand write, this is not the pen that I needed, rats. I grabbed the wrong pen. Okay, all right, well, foo. All right, so you're going to get the idea you're going to have to imagine with me. <laughs> and I'll stage this. I'll take a photo and, and show you where I'm going to stage it at. Mm -hmm. um, it's one that's more like the gel pins. This one's not the gel. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that might work. Let me see that. Yeah. Nope. I can tell because it's got a little bit different of a tip on it. So I'll write strawberry jam or homemade jam or something on that little label. I'll probably will go ahead and coffee grunge that little label too. Probably won't make it quite as dark as the top because I, want, I do want them to look a little bit different than one another. And we can put these in a little set with our faux biscuits that we did last summer. Um, what else would this look cute with? Oh, I've got the little milk jars. Um, and look, let's see. We've got the little baking powder jars. I could use that with the little jellies. I like having um, different sizes of jars kind of together, both with different little toppers. So they're similar, but yet different. You get what I mean? If, if every jar had the same um, decoration on it, it would get a little, it would get a little too much, I don't know, repetition, I guess. I do like some repetition, but I like a little bit of variation too. I'm looking to see what else we got that would look so cute with this. Um, I, I'm most of my stuff's over there and I can't reach it. <laughs> I should have brought it to the table. But I think that's going to look super cute. So you can make all these jelly jars in all kinds of different sizes. So thank you, Christina, for this inspiration. You all tell Miss Christina thank you all. And uh, make sure that you give her page a follow too, okay? And stay tuned. We have crafting, live crafting and DIY coming up all the rest of the afternoon and evening over in the Craft on the Clock group. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9.45 a.m., I believe it is. 
I think that's right. So, um, and I'll have these finished and I can show you tomorrow what these look like in the morning. How's that? Sounds good?